I really do love and appreciate the existence of the Mac Studio. It was leaked like literally just a couple of days before the spring event last year and it was not at all what I was expecting. It was so against the norm for Apple. They were normally the kind of company to assume you gotta buy our iMac in order to get these kinds of pro class chips or GPU performance and that has to come with our 5K display and our built-in speakers and webcam. But unfortunately, as much as I love the Mac Studio, it's Sounds like it might never actually get updated at all. Let's begin. So this possibility comes from Mark Gurman, who's gotten a lot right in the Mac leak world as of lately, and he's saying that an M2 Ultra variant of the Mac Studio would basically be far too similar to the upcoming M2 Ultra in the Mac Pro. In case you weren't aware, the upcoming Mac Pro has reportedly been scaled down to be a lot less as insane as it has been previously rumored, like stitching four M2 Max chips together and is now just going to be more like an M2 Ultra grade chip, although hopefully, thanks to some improved manufacturing and architecture, they'll be able to scale up the performance a lot better than the M1 Max was able to scale up with M1 Ultra, as we saw in a lot of videos. The performance didn't really result in that much bigger of a push over the M1 Max, and you don't even have to be, like, a huge techie nerd to find that out. Like, I reviewed the non-binned M1 Ultra previously, and it didn't really export any faster at all than my M1 Max MacBook Pro did, so my hope is that Apple's figured out a way to fix that with the M2 Ultra coming to the Mac Pro, but it makes a lot of sense that given all of the bad news surrounding the Mac Pro, like the RAM won't be user upgradable and maybe won't even let you use discrete GPUs, in which case a lot of people are wondering, like, what's the point of the Mac Pro at all? And my guess is it's to kind of reuse the existing Mac Pro assembly lines. And I'm sure there will be a certain amount of modularity to it with PCIe slots for expanding local storage or expanding networking cards, and let's hope that the upgraded Mac Pro could at least get an SD card slot. That still feels a little bit bizarre that you gotta buy an adapter with your $50,000 computer to plug in an SD card, but if the Mac Pro ends up being as disappointing as we think, then introducing an M2 Ultra variant of the Mac Studio is basically a guaranteed way to kill off any potential sales of the Mac Pro, at least for the short term. But in more recent claims from Mark Gurman, it's simply that they might not ever update the Mac Studio studio once the Mac Pro switches over to Apple Silicon, and that way we kind of go back to the old way of the desktop tower world for Apple, and you just have your Mac Mini, which now goes up to the M2 Pro variant, but if you need something more powerful than the M2 Pro, then sadly you just gotta go all the way up to the giant cheese grater, and I don't like that lineup idea, because I definitely think most people would rather have just an updated Mac Studio than a whole on Mac Pro, but I hate to admit the report sounds fairly logical to me, you know? Like, Apple doesn't really have the name Studio in anything else other than the Studio Display and the Mac Studio. And of course, the Studio Display is a monitor that can always be an accessory that's pitched for MacBook users, Mac Mini users, even Mac Pro buyers out there could buy the Studio Display, but there's no iPad Studio, there's no iPhone Studio, there's no AirPods Studio. So we thought that Apple might be introducing a new category, but in reality, it might just have been a stopgap meant to hold over the pros so that Apple could say, you know, by the end of 2022 that, well, we've developed Apple Silicon that's faster than any other Mac in the past, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was here to stay. And I'm getting very similar vibes with the Mac Studio that I am to the iMac Pro, which is my favorite iMac of all time. It was the first time they ever brought the Pro naming to iMac and it had the best I.O. of any Mac ever. And honestly, for the resolution of the display and the performance you were getting out of it, it was a pretty reasonably priced iMac. Yeah, a high-end one, starting at five grand, but it was the first Mac to accommodate for a 1080p webcam. It was the first, and I believe only Mac, to ever ship one terabyte of storage by default. That's right, even the $6,000 Mac Pro ships with 256 gigs of storage by default, whereas iMac Pro was like one terabyte or better. And I loved it, and it was a fantastic machine, and I think a lot of other people out there enjoyed it too, but never really updated it, you know? It was just meant to come out a bit earlier because the cheese grater Mac Pro wasn't ready yet, 
yet. And once the real Mac Pro came out, Apple didn't want to touch the iMac Pro. They never wanted to update it. And I'm still hopeful that they'll eventually update the iMac Pro, just like they pointlessly updated the HomePod. But I'm feeling similarly about the Mac Studio. It's the first of its kind. You know, they've never used that name before. It has great I.O. and for the money, it's a really great Mac. It's a really great desktop and you can customize it with your own keyboard, mice, or monitors, however you like it. The price is somewhat reasonable, but it sounds like the kind of Mac that's meant to hold us over for the Mac Pro once again. And I do think that that Mac Pro, Apple confirmed they're not giving up on it, right, is probably going to get the M2 Ultra chip. And because M2 Ultra is obviously going to be the fastest chip Apple has ever made, period, they're going to get to charge whatever they want for that chip. And you won't be able to say, well, you can get something faster for cheaper. No, because it will literally be the fastest Apple Silicon on the planet. So as long as they say that M2 Ultra is restricted to the Mac Pro, they can justify charging $5,000 or $6,000 for it. And we can't really say it's overpriced because there will be some market of people that will claim, well, I just need every ounce of performance out of my Mac. I need as much power as possible and only the Mac Pro will be able to hold the title of fastest Mac of all time. So Apple can charge whatever they want for it. And that means the Mac Studio, arguably just with the M1 Ultra, is starting to cannibalize into Mac Pro sales a bit because I could see a lot of people out there saying, yeah, M2 Ultra is fast, but M1 Ultra is still fast enough for me. So I'll just buy a certified refurbished older Mac Studio, save a lot of money and still have a lot of great IO to pull from with that giant brick. So restricting the M2 Ultra to the Mac Pro may be the only way to ensure it has somewhat of a market because dropping the M2 Ultra into two separate Macs at the same time and the only advantage to the Mac Pro is that uh, I guess you can add some more networking cards or some more local storage. You know, it's not a great argument and maybe the thermal architecture of the Mac Pro will allow them to clock the M2 Ultra at higher speeds than what you could theoretically get out of the Mac Studio. But to me, it's very clear that Apple's in a bit of a supply chain frenzy trying to move a lot of manufacturing outside of China, trying to have more chip fabrication go on domestically like in Arizona. And they're likely just looking at the sales of the cheese grater Mac Pro and also noticing like, hey, our chips that are in Mac minis are outperforming old Mac Pros. It means that the addressable market for $6,000 plus Macs is getting increasingly smaller every year because there's more and more professionals that no longer need to buy a six dollars to $10,000 machine to do what they need to do. They can get what they need out of a MacBook or a Mac Mini or a Mac Studio these days. So all of the time and money that would be spent on a really fancy Mac Pro with more modularity and more upgrades. I'm not trying to say it's impossible to have a modular ARM Mac, but all of the energy and time that would go into redesigning it and updating it probably won't pay off when it's likely not going to sell at that much higher volume anyway because of the diminishing returns of getting silicon this fast. So once again, I do think that the transition to ARM for the Mac is an overall good thing because most people are buying laptops, not desktops, but most of the advantages of switching to ARM are in the laptop space, not so much the desktop space. And I feel like the more expensive and the more complicated you make a desktop, the less the advantages of ARM tend to pay off because people that buy Macs like the Mac Pro, they don't care about efficiency. They don't care that much about performance per watt. Apple can try to convince you you do by saying, you know, the Mac Studio, this can save you 1,000 kilowatt hours of energy per year. And that's great and all, but once you start wanting to do, you know, more discrete GPUs or start overclocking the CPU at higher and higher speeds and letting it run hotter and hotter like Intel grade chips, that's when the efficiency gains don't really pay off and the performance you get out of it is not as noticeably better than x86 architectures, which ultimately I still think the transition to ARM was a good idea, but all of that to encompass that the transition for Apple Silicon for the Mac Pro will probably be the least noticeable compared to every other Mac. You know, the performance enhancements we got for the MacBook Air were amazing, same with the MacBook Pro. Huge, crazy performance jumps for the Mac Mini, and then new models like the Mac Studio are amazing and a lot cheaper than what we had to pay before for that kind of performance. But the Mac Pro, I think, has likely the least to gain when Apple is not trying very hard with it. You know, it'd be different if they were developing a M2 Extreme or whatever, or had found a way for discrete GPUs and external RAM to work in tandem with the unified memory. And there's been rumors that Apple's toyed around with that, but it's probably just not worth the time or money because not that many people are going to end up buying it. So that's why I'm feeling pretty confident in Gurman's report that the Mac Studio is going to end up being a stopgap. It's going to sit around on Apple's website for far too long and kind of 
of like how right now we're looking at the M1 IMAX saying, come on, Apple, when are you going to update that? It's probably going to be like 2024 and we're still going to be asking, why haven't they updated the Mac Studio yet? Why is it just sitting there? And I'm telling you now, it's because they want you to buy the Mac Pro. And there's a decent chance that the Mac Studio will just sit there until it's officially discontinued. But hopefully by the time they discontinue it, you'll be able to buy certified refurbished M2 Ultra Mac Pros for maybe $4,000 or somewhere in that ballpark. And hopefully that can give you way more performance than what the M2 Pro is offering in the Mac Mini. But seeing Apple go more pro grade with the Mac Mini 2 and get more pricey with it is a good indicator that they don't see much of a future for the Mac Studio. But I hope I'm wrong because I do love the form factor. I like the idea of having a more pro class desktop that's better than the Mac Mini that can still fit on your desk and everything. Plus frontal I.O. is fantastic. Maybe I wouldn't mind them killing off the Mac Studio as much if they brought that frontal I.O. to the Mac Mini. That would also be cool. What do you guys think is going to happen? Feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly on Talos of Tech Pro. Seriously, helps us out a ton. And this is your Apple Sleep here. I'll see you all in the next one.